Hi everyone, in this video we're going to define Riemann sums, definite integrals, and then I'll give you the formula to find the area under a curve. Before we do that, let me just tell you what a Riemann sum is intuitively. Um, so let me draw a picture here. So this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. And say we have a function f goes from here to here. Okay, and this is a and this is b. Okay, so we have some function. And now I'm going to draw a bunch of random rectangles. So I'm going to draw a rectangle here. I'll draw a rectangle here. Okay, I'll draw a rectangle here. Okay, I'll draw a rectangle here. It's a big rectangle. I'll go ahead and draw a little skinny rectangle here. And I'll draw one here. And I'll draw one here. So I have a graph and I just drew a bunch of random rectangles, okay? If you add up the areas of all of these rectangles, you get a Riemann sum. So a Riemann sum, basically all you do is you take a graph, you draw a bunch of rectangles, and you add up their areas. That's a Riemann sum. But the catch is it can be any random rectangles, right? So it's, you, don't, you can't specify what they are. So let's go through the formal construction of the definite integral so you see how, how intense this actually is. It's really, really cool. So we'll start by having a function f, and it's defined on a, b. So f is defined on a, b. Okay, so that's our a and our b, just like in our picture above. And capital delta, I believe this is the capital Greek letter delta. There's, a, there's another delta, I think it's lowercase. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure. This is a partition. Partition. Partition of AB. Given by. So a partition is just a bunch of numbers that break up an interval, right? So, so our partition in the picture above, let me scroll up so you can see it. In the picture above, our partition is these dots here, which I'm about to draw. That's our partition, those random numbers there that we picked to break up the interval. Okay, that's our partition. So here, we're going to give them names. So the first number, notice here it's A in this picture. So I'll say it's A, and I'll call it, we'll call that X sub 0. That's less than, ne than the next one, which is X sub 1. So maybe this is X sub 1 in our picture. Less than dot, dot, dot. Less than X sub n and we'll call that b. So I'm going to go back to our picture and just call this x sub n and x sub 0 just for added clarity and this would be x sub 2 etc. So we're taking an interval and we're just breaking it up randomly. So taking an interval and randomly breaking it up. We don't know what these numbers are. Where delta x sub i is the width of the ith subinterval is the width of the ith subinterval. So in our picture, um, this here is delta x sub i. They're all different in our picture, or some of them might be close to the same, but they don't necessarily have to be the same. So in our picture, it's the width of the rectangle, right? We haven't formed the rectangle yet uh, down here in our description, uh, but we will, we will. Now, if c sub i is any, I'm going to underline this, this is key, is any point, so any number in the ith subinterval, so you just basically pick a random number in the subinterval. So, if like for example, let me scroll up so you can see a little bit better. Um, so like here maybe, here, this is my uh, C, C sub i, right? That's my C sub i right there. And that, what, what happens is we're going to plug that into the function to get the y value here, f of C sub i, you see. So when you plug in C sub i into the function, that'll give us f of C sub i, and that will give us the height of the rectangle, which you'll see shortly. So if C sub i is any point in the ith subinterval, then the sum so the sum here we have a sum 
the sum goes from i equals 1 to n. And it's the sum of the areas of the rectangles. So it's the height, which we said was f of c sub i, times the width of the rectangle, which is delta x sub i. So this is the Riemann sum of f for the partition delta. So again, we take a bunch of we take a bunch of um, random um, rectangles and we add up their areas and we call that a Riemann sum. All of this is just a formal way of, of saying all that. So what is an integral? So here's where it gets really crazy. Okay, so uh, if, or what is the definite integral? That's what we're defining. So if each, just a random comment, if each subinterval is of equal width, so if they're all the same width, um, the partition is called regular. So the partition, we can't assume that, but it's important to know it. So the partition is called regular. And in this case, we don't need delta x sub i. We just have delta x, and that's b minus a over n. So in actual calculus problems, when you do these problems, you use this formula, which I'll write down again in a little while. You assume it's regular, right? Because you assume that you can find the answer, so you can use any partition you want. So that's 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 what that would be. Uh, so now we're gonna define something. We're gonna let this symbol here, so like these double bars around the partition, we're gonna say this is the norm of delta. And what is this? Uh, this is the this is the width of the largest subinterval. Okay, of the largest subinterval. It's the width of the biggest one. Okay, the width of the largest subinterval. Notice if the partition is regular, they're all the same. So if the partition is regular, um, in, in the regular case you would get that the norm is equal to delta x, which is equal to b minus a over n. That's kind of uh, cool to notice, uh, and we'll come back to that. All right, so here's the key. So if, so if we take the limit as the width of the largest subinterval goes to zero of the finite sum of the areas of these random rectangles, okay? And if this limit exists, so if this limit exists, we say the function is integrable. We say f is integrable, integrable on AB. Okay, we say it's integrable on AB and the limit, right, since it exists, is, so I'll write it again, we have the limit, and I'll explain why intuitively this is the case as well in a second. The limit as the norm goes to zero of the finite sum as i runs from one to n of f of c sub i times delta x sub i we're going to say it's equal to what's called the definite integral of our function. So the definite integral of f of x with respect to x from a to b. That's what it's called. It's called the definite integral of f uh, from a to b. Okay. And in the case uh, if f is non-negative, so if it's greater than or equal to 0 on a, b, then the area under the curve will be this. Okay, that will be the area under the curve. Um, before I, I give you the formula for the area, uh, let me just explain why this should make sense. Because um, it probably doesn't yet. 
or might not. So if you if you have a bunch of rectangles, right, and you're trying to find the area, you're either going to get an under approximation or an over approximation. So if you let the width of the biggest rectangle go to zero, what's going to happen is you're going to get you're going to get smaller and smaller rectangles. Right? You'll get you'll get more rectangles. So eventually you have infinitely many rectangles and they cover the area. And so you get the area. So because if the if the biggest rectangle in width goes to zero, all the other ones must go to zero too. So you get like tons of really super skinny rectangles, and you get all of the area. Notice uh, in the case where it's regular. So if all of the subintervals have equal width, we just got delta x, which was b minus a over n. So if this goes to zero, then n goes to infinity. So if you like you can replace this with n going to infinity in your mind and uh, that way you can actually compute it. In fact, in the problems, that's what we do, right? We let n go to infinity and the reason we do is because we assume a regular partition. So the formula that we tend to use in problems is the following. So the area under the graph from a to b, we say it's the limit as n goes to infinity of the finite sum as i runs from 1 to n of f of c sub i times delta x. Okay, And so delta x here is b minus a over n. And notice this agrees with our definition up here, right? If the length of the largest subinterval goes to 0 and delta x is equal to this, that means n must get really, really big, so n goes to infinity. That lets us actually do the computation mathematically. And c sub i, well, before it was any number in the interval, so we force it to be a plus i delta x, so we can actually compute it. This is the right endpoint. So this is the formula we use uh, to find uh, area. So uh, definitely not going to do an example in this video, because they take like 10 minutes. They're really long. You have to work through all of this. Uh, but I hope this video was helpful. And yeah, that's it.